Oh, yeah. There we are. Man, cool. It's a tree coming up from the roots, isn't it? It's, That's right. It's not a genealogical tree. No, a tree of life. Yeah. A tree of life. Oh, I think it looks much better on yours. More mysterious. Well, when we're looking for the moment when Darwin discovered um, the notion of natural selection, I think uh, we have to not try to find one particular moment. We have to see it as a, a gradual process. Right. Now, when he says, I opened the first notebook on transmutation of species, we, he kept that notebook. Actually, he kept almost everything. Yes. He was He was a... He was a collector by profession, so yeah. he collected these notebooks, everything that he wrote down uh, during the voyage of the Beagle, and also these transmutation notebooks, as he called them, transmutation. He never uses the word evolution, but transmutation, yeah. so it's really on transmutation. And isn't it the best documented life in history? So you've had quite a... I think so. I don't know of anyone who kept so much material. No. Yeah. Now, what he had to do at that moment, I think, is he had to find an answer to two questions. First of all, what was that mechanism? Secondly, um, how can you visualize it? How can you make an image of it? And strangely enough, I think he starts with the second question. He starts by making uh, an image. Image is incredibly important in science, as in, as in art. It's important as in art, I think. You need something like that, yeah. some basic, something you can visualize. Well, in this case, it, that was really the case with Darwin, I think. He yeah. first needed an image and then he could start thinking about the, theor the theoretical point. So the first image that comes up to him is the image of a tree. He says, as you can see here, a tree irregularly branched, some branches far more branched. So he already has this idea. But four pages later on in the notebook, he changes his mind. He says, mm, the tree of life should perhaps be called the coral of life. Ah. Uh, so he, he makes a drawing of it yeah. and he oh, yeah. shows that, that the, stop, base, stop, stop. the base is dead. And that in a way is a better, um, better isn't it? Because the well, beginning of life is all, it's distinct, like dead coral. So it's actually a very good image, but the problem was he had seen a coral and he knew what it was, but most people in England didn't know, I think. Absolutely not, no. <laughs> so what it, does he write? Um, at the top of the page, all of a sudden he adds, no, only makes it excessively complicated. So he rejects the image and returns to the original image, the tree of life, and then he draws it ten pages further on, the famous image of the tree of life, uh, as we all know it. Thank yeah. God. And it starts with, I think, how very, very few of us could start with, I think, and then not a mad idea, but one that actually connects with nature. <laughs> then, of course, he had the image. He still had to answer the first question, namely, what is this mechanism behind transmutation? In his autobiography, he writes about that very moment. Uh, it's, uh, he, it's when he refers to Malthus. Um, In October 1838, that is 15 months after I had begun my systematic inquiry, I happened to read for amusement, yeah. Malthus on population, and being well prepared to appreciate the struggle for existence which everywhere goes on from long continued observation of the habits of animals and plants, it at once struck me yeah. that under these circumstances favourable variations would tend to be preserved, and unfavourable ones to be destroyed. The result of this would be the formation of new species. Here then, I had at last got a theory by which to work. If he says, it at once struck me, you would at least expect a few exclamation marks or something, some, some signs of excitement. And yes. Actually, there are none on, not on this page, not on the next page, whereas elsewhere in the notebooks, he makes, he, he adds lots of exclamation marks, even for the most trivial things. Um, even double or even triple uh, exclamation marks, but none here at this very important moment, according to himself. But if you keep reading in, in the notebook, um, you see that in the next one, notebook E, uh, he reads or makes notes on a text by John Herschel, also a very uh, important yeah. scientist uh, at the time. 
Um, and he writes about Herschel that Herschel calls, as you can see here, he calls the appearance of new species the mystery of mysteries. So I think at that moment, when he read that, this, when Darwin read this, it must have struck him that, yeah, well, I think I've solved this mystery of mysteries. So what, is, what does he do? He adds a, a, a big exclamation uh, mark and shouts, hurrah! And does he write hurrah or anything hurrah, else? Hurrah! No, but anywhere else does he write hurrah? No, no, no. no, no, no. 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 So I think if you're looking really uh, for a eureka, a eureka moment, yeah, that's this, it, that's this comes close. 